Hello, I'm Peter Kistler reporting for Heart Rhythm TV on current controversies in EP and I'm be, uh, delighted to be joined by uh, Professor Luigi DiBiagi from uh, New York, uh, who's kindly agreed to talk to us today on a, a very hot topic, uh, left atrial appendage electrical uh, isolation. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Luigi. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much, uh, Heart Rhythm TV and the Heart Rhythm Society for having me. We might just drive straight in and, and can you talk to us about how this concept evolved and your thoughts regarding mechanism? Well, uh, Peter, you know, I, I can be very simple. I mean, I think for many years, the ablation of a fib did not work because, you know, we were thinking, oh, the only reason why it doesn't work is because we have PV reconnection. We learned earlier than others. I feel that we were having recurrent AFib with isolated veins and isolated posterior wall with patient AFib. So we had to think it has to come from other area. Other centers were keep repeating, oh, recurrent AFib comes because you have PV reconnection. And, you know, second, third, fourth ablation, always after AFib, but still AFib there. Now, many electrophysiologists following this program will know that they can do pulmonary vein isolation, posterior wall isolation, and still having patient in AFib. What to do at this time? We try to isolate the left atrial appendage. We find good outcome. The proof of concept was in 2010 in circulation. We are in 2021 right now. Uh, we keep doing it. We publish the belief trial. We have the AMAS trial where the electrical isolation of the appendage is gonna be done mechanically by the Lariat. We have our plea trial going on right now and many others with cryo, with radio frequency, have reported that improved the outcomes. And I feel now everybody agree, yes, it improved the outcome, but increased the stroke risk. And I say, yes, increase the stroke risk if the patient are not probably anticoagulated, but I feel if everybody agree that improved the outcome of atrial fibrillation ablation in non paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, that's something that is worth an important mentioning. Can, I, can we then um, talk about your, uh, your strategy? How do you go about atrial appendage? Peter, I really consider the appendage as the fifth pulmonary vein. We do a very nice anatomical reconstruction. We, we create the geometry. We do it with fluoro, without fluoro, with 3D mapping, with uh, cartosound, without cartosound. We go around high power, no less than 43 watts. We go around most of the time, and I recommend everybody to do it in sinus rhythm at the beginning so that you do one pass. If not isolated, you do a quick uh, activation map. You go to the early side of activation. You will achieve isolation, no problem. It's thicker than the veins. You reconnect more frequently. So most of the time, you need to re-isolate the vein because it will reconnect during an isoproterenol test, but you can achieve that. and please try to do it because you will improve your outcome in a paroxysmal patient. And remember that your patient need to be on proper oral anticoagulation or close it a few months later with a closure device in US with Watchman, in Europe and in China with any other device and the outcome will improve. Is the catheter actually inside the appendage on, on the appendage side or you're on the atrial side when you're ablating? We have the mapping catheter right inside the appendage and we try to stay as much at the osteo. In selected cases, you need to go a little bit inside to achieve the isolation with a focal ablation, but most of the time going, staying around will achieve your endpoint. And if a patient has their left atrial appendage isolated, are they committed to either a closure device or lifelong anticoagulation? Yes, you are committed to long-term anticoagulation, but you are committed to long-term anticoagulation even you know, if you are a chat vasc 2 or higher with current guidelines. The difference is that you know, this continuation of a, of a couple of doses will be more dangerous. So you touch a very important point. Before you go for left fetal appendage isolation, you need to have proper discussion with your patient about the consequence of ablating that area because it will change you know, the, the, the life of that patient in terms of anticoagulation or closure device. We recommend closure for better patient compliance with medication and long-term follow-up. 
So if you had a patient who required surgery and the, the surgeon contacts you and, and wish to have their anticoagulants discontinued, um, how, how do you approach that situation if they've had their appendage isolated? We ask them to do it as much uninterrupted as possible. If not possible for the surgeon, we recommend uh, some doses of low weight molecular heparin right prior to the procedure or heparin drip just uh, to uh, hospitalize the patient with heparin drip that can be stopped a few hours before the surgery. And uh, then the anticoagulation needs to be restarted as soon as possible. Of course, uh -huh. you know, you can do a TEE to evaluate the contractility of that appendage. In some cases, there is passive contraction of the appendage or the anterior wall of the left atrium is, you know, contract enough to, to give to the appendage a little bit of uh, contractility that will reduce the stroke risk. That's wonderful. Really appreciate your insights uh, today, Luigi. Thank you again. Thank you very much for having me.